welcome to my kitchen and welcome to the second uh, bread machine video that I wanted to do with uh, tips, tricks, and hacks from many, many years of baking bread in bread machines. Uh, I mentioned in the last video I have owned <clears throat> probably hundreds of bread machines. I know that's hard to believe, but I've been doing this for many years and uh, I uh, buy them and resell them for fun and uh, love baking in them and then after I have tried it out then I sell it and move on. But uh, right now I own three. Uh, today I'll be using as an example uh, this uh, Breadman machine here with a pretty much of a horizontal loaf. And um, so let's, let's get into the information. Um, let me get my reading glasses on here. The uh, thing I want to show you first of all is once your bread machine starts mixing, that's the first thing that happens after you push the start button. Uh, that's, after it's mixed for a couple of minutes, that's when you want to check, and open the lid, and look down at the dough ball, and, and you've got to make an assessment of if it's mixing and forming a dough ball like it should. And what you want to look for, this is real important, is is the dough as it's being mixed is it kind of staying on the bottom of the pan and kind of smearing around you know more like a, a thick batter then if that's the case then that's a mistake and you and all is not lost you can correct it but you've got to correct it early and what that means is that you have um, either uh, too much liquid or the opposite of that, not enough flour. And uh, so what you do is you, you take a, about a tablespoon of flour, if you see it kind of smearing along the bottom, uh, you see a little bit of a dough ball, but it's not really starting to shape up and make a dough ball, it's being smeared around. Then you add about a tablespoon of flour, kind of sprinkle that in there, and then you'll start to see that batter get picked up and then it starts to form a dough ball. And that's, that's what you want. And so don't overcorrect it. Put that tablespoon of flour in and see if that corrects it. And come back in a minute or two and if it's starting to form a nice ball and kind of getting thrown around the pan and then it sits on the post and spins around in a circle, that's, that's what you want. Um, so that's, that's real important. You've got to make your adjustment early if possible. The earlier the better. Um, but give it time to mix, you know, where the flour is getting caught up and uh, use, like I showed the other day, use the spatula, but use the handle to get the stuff out of the corners. Um, and the other thing to look for is, is your dough ball too dry? And that will show up in a couple of ways. If the dough sort of looks ragged with uh, pieces kind of over here and, uh, you know, rough edge over there, um, or if it's really dry, sometimes it'll throw a little ball of dough off over here. You got your main dough ball here and there's a one spinning off by itself and getting thrown around. That means it's too dry. And so, um, you want to, whatever your liquid is, I'll, sometimes I bake with buttermilk. Um, if it's water, great, then get you some, uh, lukewarm water and put, you got to be careful with this, put like a teaspoon of water in there onto the dough ball and watch it for a few minutes and see if that it starts to get smoother if that one little dough ball off in the corner is in its orbit over there gets caught picked up then that's good and uh, uh, you want it to form the dough ball and and be sort of smooth and round that's that's the shape you're looking for if it's ragged then Add a teaspoon of liquid. If that's not enough, add another teaspoon, but give that time to get taken up. Otherwise, you go the other way, you add too much liquid, and then you're stuck with this thing of having to dump more liquid and then more flour, more liquid, more flour, and you can really mess it up. So make your adjustments small. Wait a minute or two. If you need to adjust more, do another small adjustment until you see the dough ball looking like you need to. Um, now, after, 
after your dough has uh, formed a ball and it's and it's it's rising in the heated phase this is the phase right before it starts to bake it gets you, your machine will warm up and that really activates the yeast and it starts to really rise and grow then um, if it's over what they call in the business it's overproofing if it's over rising and you see it coming up and you think oh my gosh that's gonna lift the lid off the machine and that will happen if you've uh, somehow gotten you threw too much yeast in there by accident uh, or, or didn't you know didn't count it right you thought you put a teaspoon and a half but you, oh my gosh you grabbed the wrong spoon you used a tablespoon <laughs> then you could have a problem so um, but you can actually still work with it so um, if you see it starting to come up to where it's going to push the lid it's okay to stab the loaf that's what I call it and um, a good thing to use for that is a shish kebab stick they're about that long you know and you put your little uh, meat and onions and bell peppers whatever have a few of those around that you can get to um, in case you do need to stab your loaf and what you do is you take that that shish kebab stick and you see the big mound of the thing over rising over proofing then you just boom you just push it straight in there it's like uh, uh, bursting a bubble you know and just go boom 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 several times that shish kebab stick and you'll see that loaf just kind of collapse in uh, because it's it's really active and you need to get that air out of there otherwise it, it's not going to perform right and it may not be a great loaf but at least uh, it's not going to get stuck all over your lid or push the thing open and then it won't bake um, so uh, just remember as a last resort you can stab the loaf to make it kind of collapse in on itself a little bit and uh, keep an eye on it because that means it's out of control and you're trying to get it under control and go ahead and uh, if you watch it for a few minutes if it starts rising up again you feel like it's going to push the lid up or uh, something like that go ahead and stab it again and then once it starts baking then that rising will stop because it's too hot and the yeast won't won't continue to rise so once you hit the baking stage you're safe you can relax you don't have to really worry about the thing coming out and pushing the lid up um, the other thing I'd like to talk to you about is the salt issue. Um, if you work with bread machines and you have your cookbook and recipe book, you'll, you'll notice they make a big deal out of salt. And um, you may question when you look at the recipes in your bread machine, um, they will often include what I consider too much salt. Sometimes you'll see it be a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons of salt. Uh, that's a lot to me, and uh, I don't like to that much salt in my foods, and so you wonder, well, why in the heck do they have so much salt going into these uh, bread loaves? And the reason is, uh, like I mentioned in the last video, is that they're protecting themselves. The bread manufacturers don't want you to have a bad experience and have it overrise um, because salt is a retardant to the yeast and that's why they always say oh gosh you don't let your yeast come in contact with the salt when you're putting your ingredients in the pan uh, the way I avoid that is I put the salt in the liquid phase so there's the yeast is not going to come into contact because I put in put the yeast on top of the flour um, and it's okay to just put it on top of the flour. You don't necessarily have to put a, dig a well in the flour. They worry about that. The salt and this over-concern about the yeast is because they want the loaf to perform, they want the machine to perform, and the salt is gonna help keep it from over-proofing. But if you've done all your ingredients right, um, you're not gonna need two teaspoons of salt. Um, that's too, I can taste it in the bread when I use that, that much salt, so I don't want that and it's not really good for you. So a half a teaspoon typically is what I use, maybe a teaspoon if I'm making a two pound loaf and it's one, some, some bread machine recipes rise more than others, so I might want to use a teaspoon maybe, but usually not. I'll go with a half a teaspoon or three quarters, something like that. and. Uh, 
um, and watch the, the flour and liquid balance to make sure it's not going to overproof. Okay, and so the next thing we need to talk about is um, measuring your flour. Um, this is the container I use. Um, I don't recommend going into a flour bag because the edges are always kind of messing with you and causes you to spill it. So get you a nice container, put your fl bread flour in there, and, uh, and then you take your, your measuring cup, and you have, let's say it's a two and a half cup uh, recipe or three and a half cup recipe flour. So you get your smaller cup and hold it over and sprinkle it into, into here and lightly. And um, uh, so that's giving it the right texture in the measuring cup. And then you uh, don't pack it down. That's real important. People think, well, I've, I've got to level this off with a knife and, and get a nice edge. Well, I'm going to pack it down and that'll be easier. To, no, don't do that because uh, then you're messing with the measurements. You want it to be kind of light, kind of fluffy, and then you run your knife edge along the top. But don't, don't push down on the flour. Don't do that. And uh, so that's my best recommendation on that. The other thing I wanted to uh, share with you is pan cleaning. That's real important. Um, this pan here, uh, like a lot of them, has four attachments to hold the mixing device on the bottom of the pan. And so let me get up here where you can see this. Um, you are going to have your pan like this and you've dumped your bread out and now you want to clean this and you've soaked it in a little bit of water you poured the water off um, and let's and I've got to tilt this so you can see it but normally you're going to clean it like this and you'll have maybe a um, half an inch of water in the bottom maybe even less just enough to where it's uh, you can get to everything with a toothpick and you take your toothpick and you run it around this edge here and you run it around this edge here so you do each one all those four and then you've got two more edges here you've got the edge around the mixing here where the seal is and then this edge around the post and just take your toothpick and go around in a circle around this outer edge and then this inner edge, and what you'll find is that uh, up, floating up into the water is old dough, and so you've got to get that out of there. I don't know if, if you're like me, you don't want to put this pan away and then come back and bake again and, and have uh, bread dough that was left over from the last loaf six months later <laughs> into your brand new loaf. So that's my best advice on cleaning the pan is a little toothpick, a little warm water in the bottom, run a little circle and you'll just see the bread dough come floating up into that water and then you throw the water away, dry your pan and you know, wipe it down with a paper towel and it's okay to put away. Um, all right, so that's the last thing I wanted to share with you is cord management. Um, this is how I take care of that. Uh, you know, I, I hate it when I have appliances and I have the cord getting caught on things and dangling and then I put it away to store it and the machine is sitting on the cord. So what I do is I have a rubber band around the cord, then you loop one here and you have a little paper clip. And fortunately bread machines have all these little notches for heat and whatever. And this keeps it from getting tangled. You can store it. And uh, that's my best advice on that. A couple of rubber bands, a paper clip, wind it around, and then clip it there. All right, so I hope you liked it. Subscribe, tell your friends about it, and thanks, and we'll see you next time.